answer to, to the people's the spoken word in the form of even preaching. And, and you know, and this is what I've been doing and giving people an opportunity to be exposed. God gave you a talent. He gave it to you. He didn't give it to you. He keep it under the bushel. And by all means, having a television program allows me to bring you out to the forefront to give you the opportunity. If you've got the capability, I will give you the opportunity. And so, as I've been saying for the last past 34 years, call a friend, call a loved one, inform them that Gospel Hour is on the air. I want them to enjoy this program right along with you. Today is a very special program. Very, very special. I have a wonderful, long-time friend. And when people see us, they, you know, we don't look alike, I think, because of the color tone. The color tone. They think that we're related. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> may I say, all of us are related <laughs> to some point at some degree. <laughs> Thank you, Mother Eve. You made that possible. But this is my longtime friend. I, 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 let me just say this. I am so pleased to have him on my show. He's been with me at Symphony Hall and at the other venues that I, I host. He's been there. He has been responsible for my being not only in the magazine, but on the cover of the magazine. A magazine that has uh, given much positive information, informative information, because you can read any newspaper and there's always a mixture of good, but most times bad, but this magazine projects good information. It's called Positive Community Magazine. My sisters and brothers, none other than the publisher himself, Mr. Adrian Council Senior. Adrian, Thank you so much, and I uh, I appreciate what you said about just let your light so shine so that other people can see your good works and be led. Well, if our light like goes off, I don't think they will see us too well. So, because <laughs> <laughs> it requires a little more light for us. But right. you know what? As I often said, and uh, you've heard me say the many times we on stage that uh, this is good black. Amen. Because this black don't crack. Amen. <laughs> okay, I'm, and I'm you're not you. looking any bit of. Listen, I know you're 78, but you look like you're in your 40s. Uh, okay. A little closer to that. Um, I'm glad to be here, though. And, Thank you, my friend. We've, uh, we've known each other for quite some time, now, um, and, and you have been insisting that I come down here uh, for a few years, and so I'm glad to be here today. Because as I opened up, I talked about consistency. You've been consistent. Uh, I mean, you know, when you first started up the magazine, and those who certainly uh, received the magazine, you know, and I know so many of you do receive it across the country, but what you are seeing now is not what you saw day one. And uh, if I can, uh, Maxine, I don't know if you're able to ask uh, Jason to come in, uh, who can operate one of the cameras, because I need him to close-up shots for me, but uh, you know, I, I, I believe the first magazine was written, wasn't it really just black and white or most black? Um, the, first, <laughs> it first came out as a newsletter, as a newsletter, and we began to publish that with the support and, and, and the encouragement of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and vicinity, mm -hmm. and so we published a, a, a newsletter to keep them informed and to keep their constituents the constituents informed of what's going on. So this occurred in New York? First. Right, it's occurred in New York. As a matter of fact, um, we I was the general sales manager at radio station WLIB, oh, and okay. we developed a relationship with the churches. That relationship grew into the WLIB Good News newsletter. And so Reverend Blackshear um, uh, was, uh, was the president at the time of Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity, and he asked us if we could do one for his organization, and that we did. And so um, we did that one. Um, uh, we did that for a few months, and then um, we turned it into a magazine cover format. Uh, my business.
business partner, Gene Nashwells, and I. Um, and um, we published our first issue. This issue right here with that one is our very first issue. Now, uh, okay. Thank you, Jason, for getting me. <laughs> right. That lets me know that you really like me, Jason. That's why. <laughs> okay, can you zoom in a little bit closer? And I'll try to tilt it with the tape. There you go. There. Back then, we were known as Positive Community News. Mm -hmm. We were a, um, a news, uh, a, a mobile newspaper, uh, and we published it um, every month and we distributed to a lot of the congregations in the New York City area. And, um, and but uh, you have a few color pages. Couple of color pages, yeah. couple of color pages. And, um, but we, we saw that um, overall in a community as large as the New York, New Jersey area, with the churches being such an influential institution, we just thought it, after all the years of marketing um, I spent, 20 years at WBLS and WLIB. 10 of those years, I was the general sales manager of the radio station. Um, my business partner, Gene Nash Wells, was also a, a, a sales manager at WLIB and WBLS. And we said that there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of news coverage about the good things that are happening in our faith communities. And so um, we started publishing this magazine, and um, 16 years later. Here we are. But, so, but let me ask you this. What inspired you to even want to put something like this together? I, I would have to say it was the Almighty. I mean, it was, if, if I, I can't say that I'm that smart, that I would have came up with that, but I began marketing to African-American consumers uh, through radio for, for many years. Uh, but I had, an, uh, um, what happened was, to be honest, um, I started, I went to work for WWRL for a very short time uh, as a consultant, and they were a gospel music station at the time. True. And then when I realized that, hey, the, 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 the churches are a respected institution, when I went out and talked to advertisers and potential sponsors, everybody jumped on board. And so um, it was just a revelation to me that this is somewhere, this is a community that does need a presence in the marketplace. Yes. And there, we also need to do our best to communicate the good things that are going on in the church and the community. And so that's when we started. In your early years, uh, share with us about the struggle of trying to get this magazine printed. Well, the struggle is, is that um, we began this publication um, really through the faith of our families and our, our community. Um, over the years, we made a lot of people money. Um, Dick Gidron Cadillac of the Bronx, God rest his soul, he, he was our initial sponsor. It was also Carver Federal Savings Bank in New York City and also uh, City National Bank here in Newark. Yes. They were the first advertisers in the positive community because with the reputation that Gene and I had for delivering results, um, when they found that we were going into the churches with a publication, there was no problem. So we pretty much, we pretty much built this business on, as I once heard it said, shoestrings and bubble gum. Yeah. It was by faith yeah. that we continue to persevere in, 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 with the challenges, and we move forward today. And, and we're just, we're just happy that we're so well received in so many congregations. In the Absolutely. Yeah, we're just Absolutely. happy about it. And uh, after New York involvement and in inspiration of New York, uh, how did New Jersey, especially New York, fit into this picture? Well, uh, to be honest with you, when I was at the uh, at radio station WLIB, um, I went to the management and I suggested to them that, hey, you know, Newark, New Jersey is a large African-American population and we should actually have an office out here. And you know Kay Thompson? Yes. Right. Kay Thompson um, was a proponent. She was a supporter of that idea. And Gus Henningberg yes, found Gus. us his place right at Two Park Place in Newark. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest is history. We started there about, we were there for about a year.
before I came to the conclusion that I just wanted to go out and do this. And so, you know, when they say when you step out on faith, that was exactly what it was. You know, we didn't have a lot of money. You know, it was, again, it was a bank of goodwill. And you know, one thing that I do find is that people respond well when you do things right. Absolutely. Because there have been quite a few magazines that have started, but they didn't have a longevity. I uh, even some of the independent newspapers that started, but they haven't had longevity. What would you consider to be your longevity? Or to help to your longevity? Well, I was in Harlem a few weeks ago and I was at the, you know, the God box across the street from Riverside Church. And I was walking, and, and, I, and somebody saw the magazine. He said, oh, that's the Happy Magazine. <laughs> the Positive Community reports good news from the church and the community. There's enough bad stuff going on out here. But people like to see themselves moving forward. Yes. And what we focus on is we focus on our communities moving forward, our people moving forward, and children being educated. What can we do to make our communities more healthier? What can we do? to support and grow businesses. And so um, we just found ourselves as a magnet um, attracting all of those things. And we're happy to say that we're distributed in well over 150 churches in the New York, New Jersey area. Yes. Um, as you see on any uh, page seven of any publication, you'll see the positive community roll call to progress. Uh, why don't you call out some of the things we're gonna be calling uh, church names want to do that because uh, we want to add Adrian along with Jean. want to really thank you. want to thank you for being a part of this magazine, helping us to make this, and I say us because I, uh, Adrian has some way or other has uh, drafted me. Dr. Pauline Ballard is always sitting in our audience and I share that information with her too because she might not have known that as well as you might not have known that but uh, I get drafted <laughs> and, but you know what and I don't mind doing it because it is information that is what the title of the magazine is positive information there are churches in our community that are doing some wonderful things most times we just don't about it. We just don't because we're always in our own circle doing what we do with the churches that we do it with. But to know that in New York that there are many other churches there that are giving concerts and programs and having uh, their annual conferences informed other church base, other religious groups to want to Participate. Uh, there were a couple of announcements, Dr. Ballard, that uh, in the magazine that I was not aware of. But right here at home, isn't that amazing that I, of all people, would not be, but you know, uh, there's so many of us doing what we do, and information doesn't always filter to where it needs to always go. But I looked in the magazine and I saw there there was a um, a concert taking place in the city of Newark. Actually, in the state of New Jersey, not Newark, because you know I would know about that, but uh, down central Jersey. And I was so pleased when I saw it, I made it my business to go and to just be there. Just go and be there. And I would not have known that even if it was not in the magazine. So not only is positive, but it's informative. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, Newark has become, is becoming a cultural hub yes. in this region. And um, I have. Uh, Jersey Performing Arts Center is one of the institutions to thank because they've been with us for 14 of the 15 years that we've been in business. But they have noticed since they began since they began advertising in the positive community an uptick of people coming out of New York to see the concerts and the shows. Yeah. And so that's happening all over yeah. the place because, uh, as Ca Dr. Calvin Butts of Abyssinian Baptist yes. Church in, yes. in Harlem says, the positive community is the Jet Magazine for the New York, New Jersey region. I can find out that's right. what's going on in, that's right. in, that's in, right. in, in Newark and in the surrounding areas, and they can also be informed about
about what's happening in And for uh, Calvin in, to say uh, that, uh, 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 excuse me, Rep. Dr. Calvin Butts, uh, because I know that's why I said that, uh, to say that that is very impressive. Right, you know, right. That's and so, yeah, so the idea is, is that we have to do good journalism, we have to, um, we have to tell a story. Any magazine that you pick up, you'll always see somebody that you know. Yes. You'll see somebody that you know. Yes. So it's not star-driven. It's not, you know, pastor-driven. It's also the people in the congregations, the young people, the musicians, uh, all the all kinds of leaders in the churches. And not only just the churches, but in the community. There are business leaders. There are um, uh, people in education and in health that we should know about. Yes. And so, and I'm going to give you the honor. Just call a few of those names. Let's start with Abyssinian Reverend Dr. Calvin Butts. We have uh, Abyssinian Baptist Church in uh, in Harlem. Reverend Dr. Calvin o. Butts III is the pastor. Abyssinian Baptist Church in Newark. Reverend Dr. Perry Simmons is the pastor. Amen. Uh, Abundant Life uh, Fellowship Community Church. Uh, Church of God in Christ in Newark, um, Superintendent uh, Edward Benjamin mm-hmm. Bohannon uh, Jr. is a pastor. Um, I could go on and on. There's a lot of churches on this. Um, I, you know, we have a good relationship with Dr. Uh, William Howard over yes. at Bethany Baptist That's Church. Right. Yeah. Um, let me just say that what 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 really works for all of us is that we have to be encouragers of one another. Yeah. And I, Doctor, I, I thank you because you've always had a kind word to say about the positive community. You would come by our offices sometimes, and you know it's hard doing this and starting up a business, bootstrapping a business, but you always had some kind words to say, hey, I like what you're doing. Hey, keep on doing what you're doing. And you find that that is more important sometimes than just having the money because you want to do service and you want to do that service right. Absolutely. You want to do what God has given you to do and you want to do it in the way that it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Where you make people happy. Now, that's Happiness is, a, is that's what's important. important. That's what's important. When people are happy, they return. They return. They return. And so we're just happy. Um, we're, we're, we're distributed from as far north as Grace Baptist Church in Mount Vernon. Um, Reverend Dr. Um, Reverend Dr. Dr. Franklin Richardson is the senior pastor there. Um, we are as far south as um, Bridgeton, New Jersey. Yes. Um, Dr. Albert Morgan, his congregation yes. receives the magazine every month. Yes. Inglewood Community Baptist Church. Right. Um, all the way out in Queens, we're at um, the Church Community Christian Cultural Center is on our roll call. Pastor Floyd Flake's also received. Pastor Floyd Flake yes. and just so many churches that are purchasing the magazines in bulk. So some churches are purchasing as many as 600 copies at a dollar a copy. And so um, we're happy that they're doing that and supporting us that way. And also we're happy that they're supporting our advertisers, the people who, who are building their businesses and who sincerely want outreach to the communities that we serve. Let me uh, say this, and we're going to go to a musical break. Uh, churches, pastors, and I'm very appreciative to those pastors who do watch this show. I know you do, because when you see me, you comment to me on some of the things, some of the statements that I make. And I want to appreciate those pastors who certainly have said to me, uh, you need to say more of that. And it's basically just the senior pastors, middle-aged pastors. That's right. We need to keep the hymns in the church. And, you know, whatever I, I'm throwing out there about what we as black people do and what we struggle to get and be able to have our own identity. <clears throat> and I don't think that we should lose into anything other. And uh, I've said this many times, you know, other influences come in the church and we think that that's worship it is not and i want to thank you for encouraging me i i, I want to even thank brian evans and and, and uh, listen there's so many things even the younger pastors who've said that they're trying to hold on to the traditional because it's foundation well, if i should just 
just say in this current issue of the magazine, um, we have uh, an author, uh, someone who wrote an article about the hymns in the church, mm. Dr. Yeah. Rita Harding. Rita, Rita Harding. Right, right. Yes. She's, she's talking about the value of traditional hymns yes. and that, again, we have a culture that is so rich That's right. with so many beautiful things that's right. that we can't afford to take it for granted. That's right. And, 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 and that's true. And we don't need to sell out to sell it out. Haley Haley is one of the Jewish's top uh, songs. When I say top, I'm talking about is the anthem. You got to sing it the way it's written. They'll come after you. Alpha Maria in the Catholic Church. You got to sing it the way it's written. They'll come after you. They call it sacrilege. And we take our music and we just add all this other stuff to it, and then our people are on stage and they look like rock stars. They dress like rock stars, and they sing all of this, what they sing, and you have, you call it gospel. It's not gospel. I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you know gospel music when you hear it. Let's call this song what it is. It's inspirational, and I have no problems with inspirational music. But gospel comes out of the Bible. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you something, Doctor. Um, some years ago, I was watching a, um, a talk show. It was a Catholic priest that was on the radio, on the TV, and he said that when you take harmony and melody out of the song, you're left with a beat. And soldiers march to wars on beats. So it is important that we maintain our musicality in. This, in our songs, Absolutely. you know, and that harmony and melody are equally blended in there because if you if you lose that, that was those, those were the shoulders that you stood on Absolutely. generations Absolutely. after generations, and we have to be mindful of the fact. Yeah. And, and again, Adrian, and we, I really didn't mean to take a turn in this direction. I, I, I'm not knocking some of the newer songs that are out, but I, I need young people to understand that uh, this is not built on just Richard Smallwood, and it's not built on Kirk Franklin. Uh, we got we got to go back to Thomas A. Dorsey, because right. they're standing on the shoulders of people who have fortitude through this, who could not uh, 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 stay in hotels, right. but right. stay at individuals' right. homes. Right, I remember. Again, okay. I, re and, I recall and, those stories. And Albert uh -huh. Walker sat down uh -huh. with us, uh -huh. and she shared this story with us that they couldn't even ride the bus. They had to pile up in cars, and they couldn't have, uh, sit in restaurants. So they had to take their lunch and their meals with them while they were going to various churches to well, sing. Well, Dr. Lewis, you know, the thing is, is that it was the quartets, the gospel singers of the 50s and the early 60s oh, yeah. that, that, that actually transformed into the soul singer. And that was the music you know, that was the music yes. that set us free. Yes. That was the soundtrack yes. to freedom. Yes. You see, I mean, what can you, you can go to Marvin Gaye, you can go to Sam Cooke, you can go to Aretha Franklin, you can go even to Whitney Houston. That, that, that evolved. It was the gospel of the 50s, the 40s and the 50s that evolved to the soul singers of, uh, of, of, of the 60s and the 70s. And sometimes they have to come back home because that's where they were. So, all right. Listen, we're going to take a musical break. We're going to Chicago. Chicago Mass Choir, you know, one of my favorite choirs is Chicago Mass Choir. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, they hold on to the, the traditional music.
positions. Uh, now, Michael Matthews is my director. And I, if I don't say happy birthday to his grandson, who is uh, Hassan Jackson, to his son, Miguel Matthews, who will make an error and a mistake. Thomas A. Dorsey Convention, which I'm a proud member of. Also, she 
relaxing if you don't want to, you can zoom in a little bit on this uh, and keep it there. Okay, kind of, kind of focus a little bit if you can. Thank you, pull back just a little. There you go. That's Maxine White, my good friend and my tenant. Thank you. And uh, that's not Dr. Lewis on the boat, I'll have you know. No, no, I'm not, I'm not that chubby. <laughs>
Jewish community or the Italian community or other communities, you make sure that you're grounded. Yes, it's the ideals of the race yes. that will firmly plant your feet Absolutely. and give you a vision to move forward. You have a project. You have a project, and I want you to share that with our, our viewing audience. And I'm going to let you use that, uh, Capital 3, uh, about music matters. Positive music matters, sir. We can, we can speak. We can speak about our, our, our um, you know, Black Lives Matter. But if Black Lives Matter, then how come positive community or positive music doesn't matter? I have to have a soundtrack to freedom. You know, uh, one of the things back in the days of the Civil Rights Movement, what was important is that you had a soundtrack. You had something to, um, you had something to go by. You had something to inspire you. You had something.